church today. We're praising the holy name of Jesus today. Hallelujah. No other place I'd rather be than right here. Thank you.
Thank God for the love that he has for us, that agape love, that unconditional love. There's nothing we could do to earn that love. I'm so grateful for that. Are you grateful for that love? And I'm also grateful for the love of my family. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, and announcements, my favorite part. Okay, Dr. John Paulus is going to be here Sunday, October 23rd, a.m. and p.m. service. I'm sure many of you have seen him. He's an awesome man of God. Uh, what's tonight? Tonight's another night. Family night. What are we doing family night? Our family in the same room. We got that down. Also, we're having a harvest party. We don't celebrate Halloween, but we have a ho ho the, the harvest party. Uh, please bring wrap candy for your kids. Um, you can either give it to Pastor Gina or Pastor Gail. Um, that's going to be Sunday, October 30th before Halloween, okay? We have our God thing and they have their evil thing. Um, also, we have two people that graduated. We wanted to, Bob and Rosie. They are hungry word people. And they went through Bible school again. And so uh, they liked it so much the first time, they decided to do it again. And then when we did the graduation, we certainly wanted to include them, but they were gone. Too long is right, but uh, we certainly wanted to give them their certificates. Can we give them an awesome way to go? Amen. Bless you. Hey, brother, while you're up here, why don't you just tell people what you saw last week when we were preaching? Okay, uh, well, Pastor Sherwood was preaching, an angel came in. And sat right next to right there. Praise God. Praise the Lord. It was awesome. We, it, someone else had seen the glory. So praise God. God's moving. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are you blessed? Amen. Highly favored, blessed of the Lord. Amen. To us, your those that you know and you are yourself. That's the way the Lord loves it. His kids are love and love on. But uh, we have ushers available that have uh, the the cards for you if you're going to give them the offering we appreciate it if you would fill one out let your uh, amount be put on the outside and your name so that we can uh, get back with you and make keep track of every uh, giving for your own sakes at the end of the year and plus the the ladies have to fill out a card if or I mean a envelope if if we don't so we appreciate it if you do that. Amen. Amen. The light still shines, huh? Amen. It's getting brighter. Doesn't matter what it looks like around us. The light gets brighter. Darkness gets darker, but we're on the right side. If you're on the light side, you're on the right side. Don't let anything bother you or hinder you. Amen. God is for you and he cannot ever be against his kids. And he said if anybody messes with people that are against his kids, they're going to have to deal with him. <laughs> and you can't get around him, amen? But I want to share for a second uh, what I was meditating on the other night. If you want to go to, we like to give the Word of God when we're, Philippians 4, um, we like to give the Word of God when we're receiving an offering because the Word is what we mix our faith with when we give. Amen. And Faith never comes apart from the Word of God, as we know faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word. And I think, I don't know who had told, told me that last week, but they were talking about uh, hearing someone say, faith comes by hearing and by the rhema of the Word. See, the, if you hear it once, it might just be, uh, you know, a general word to you, but when you continue to hear it, it becomes life to you. Yes. It becomes rhema life. Yes. And that means you can walk on it, you can stand on it, and you can believe it and trust in the Lord, and He will bring it to pass. Amen. Are you in Philippians? Yes. Glory to the Lord. Well, I'm going to turn to a little bit of a different 
scripture than we're used to turning to in Philippians. Um, if I could just find a book. <laughs> this is not my Bible. But it's a Bible. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm wanting Philippians 4.16. Guess what? Philippians is missing out of this book. <laughs> Truly is. That's amazing. Colossians and then Philippians is gone. No, it's not even before Colossians in this book. It's Ephesians, Colossians in this book. But praise the Lord anyway, this one's got it. We still got it in here. Amen. All right. Look here with me, if you would, to Philippians 4. And let's look at verse uh, 16 here. It says here, verse 16, um, it says, For even in Thessalonica you sent a gift more than once for my needs. Not that I seek a gift itself, but I seek the profit or the supply which increases to your account. And then it says here, it says, but I have received everything in full and have been in abundance, and I am amply supplied, having received from you and Ephroditus what you have sent, a fragrant aroma, acceptable and a sacrifice well-pleasing to God, and my God shall supply. Say, my God. My God. Point yourself, my God. My God. Shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. And all the cattle on the hills is, is here for us. But, it, uh, you know, God's looking for us to have an increase to our account. A uh, heavenly bank account and an earthly bank account. The Bible says... If you store treasures up in heaven, that basically nothing can steal them from you, and that God will guard them. And also, if you store treasures down here, then, after you've been faithful to that, he'll rebuke the devourer for you and me. And so we don't have to deal with that devourer. Amen. Amen. And you just tell the devil where he can go if he's messing with your money, saying in the name of Jesus, get off my money. Angels, go bring it in. Amen. Tell the angels to go and do the work. They, they'd be pretty bored if we don't put them to work. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And so, you know, our needs are going to be net, met not based on our college degrees, even though that's great, or our uh, Christian college degrees or our own intellectual smarts. It's not based on that. Uh, this word here, uh, supply, means that he was he will drive together um, with us uh, the anointing so that there's no division or decisiveness uh, that divides us and he'll literally drive it together and cause us as one body to bring a supply of his uh, kingdom so that he will supply us he'll put us in one accord when we give in one accord we're blessed. Amen. As we give to his kingdom. And he'll put us together. It literally means driven together. And and then we increase. And then. Uh, it, it, so what we have is we have increase. Which comes when we're participating. And each person brings their supply to the offerings. Now that doesn't just mean giving offerings. That means if you have a ministry in your heart, if you're frustrated about something you see not get done around here, well, maybe it's because you're the one that's got to get it done. Come on. That's right. If you want to increase, see, increase comes through unity and giving, not just finances, which is great when you do that, but also through giving up your time, your talents. Yeah. You know, if God has spoken to you about helping somewhere and you keep ignoring his voice, um, you're not supplying the oil that's needed. And when you are not supplying, when and they're 
whatever, leaves it up a gap in there. And then what happens is people fight burning out because they have to fill the gap. And or else the church decreases and doesn't grow. And that's not up to the pastors alone. We give a supply. The Bible says go into your own closet and get the word ready for the people so that they can do that word until we grow up to the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ yeah. and become mature in God. Amen. Amen. And be in unity with each other and edify each other and build each other up in the faith until we're bold to go out there and bring the increase to the world. Amen. Amen. So we, as we obey God, we participate. Each person has a supply and they bring their supply of love, time, talents, money, and uh, then we make a, we are one great church, amen, when we're all together. An increase automatically comes when we get out of the way of not obeying God. You know, when, you're, when we're not obedient to God by helping people in the church and helping people in the world, um, you're in the way of God. Because when you disobey, you're in the way. But when you obey, then everything will be turned around. It'll be a bright, sunny day. Amen? And so we need to supply. And um, we make our supply together. You know, it means to give uh, nourishment here, this word supply. To give nourishment. To give help. To give to those people in need. That means our heart and soul, amen? It means filling up other people and coming and helping the burden of the church and filling up that where uh, other people don't have it. You know, one of the things that I love about this is that each one of you is special. He didn't make any one of us alike. And we should never underestimate the love that we can give to others in the body of Christ and the prayer that we can give prayer supply and um, there is no one who should be left out when it comes to love in the body of Christ everyone should feel loved everyone should know that they're more important to the to the body of Christ and the church than anything else in this world than any other thing in this world because you're God's children and you are God's royalty and you're special and you are made by the master's hand and the master don't make junk and you're good all the way through maybe our flesh and other parts of us fight that but we're working on it and God's working on us and so I want to remind you Take a look around at your brother. If he needs something, help him. If we need things, help us. You know, just don't pass the offering plate and just give, you know, oh, I always give this. Well, maybe you ought to listen to the Lord. Maybe, maybe we need things that you don't even know we're going through. We never act like we need anything because we trust the Lord as our source. But guess what? The Lord uses the body as the Amen. source to help the ministers. Amen. And just being honest with you, I almost took a vacation the other day because it seemed like everybody's been taking these month-long vacations <laughs> in the church. And it's almost like, uh, by the way, you know, you just disappear and we need your help you know but people have a right to take a vacation i'm not saying that and some people they take it for a good reason but i mean don't forget to sow your seed to the church because guess what happens when you're gone for a month and and five people are gone for a month then all of a sudden you know we're out we're, we're praying lord please supernaturally send that seed if you have to put an angel on the, uh, on the porch here and drop down a bag of uh, hundreds, that's fine. 
We just need the seed so that we can put it into the gospel, pay for the lights to stay yes. on, preach the gospel around the world because we have an internet system and we have all that and we have thousands of dollars of bills a month and we have paychecks and we take very little. I mean, it's almost a shame if I was to say what I get paid. It's a shame. I mean, less than most every, but almost everybody in this church makes more than me. And it really shouldn't be that way. It should be the opposite. But I'm pure hearted and I'm not going to make anybody do anything they don't want to do. I will serve the Lord if I'm broke or if I'm rich. Amen. I did when I was broke and I'm rich by faith. Amen. So I'm just sharing my heart with you. You know, obey the Lord yes. for your sake and for ours. We obey the Lord for you. We feed you good food, don't yes. we? Yes. Amen. Thank you. So we work together. Yes. And we bring increase and we bring a change in this yes. town, in this city. Yes. And there'll be nothing will be the same because of the love of God that's shed abroad in our hearts. You agree with that? Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Let's bow our heads. Father, I just thank you for the mighty word of God that it works. And we put our faith in the seed that we sow today, Lord, that we sow it according to your word that says when we supply, that you supply for us and that all our needs according to your riches and glory will be restored back to us more than abundance, more than we ever asked or thought. Because Lord, you love a good giver. And Lord, we're good givers. Yes. And so I thank you right now that everyone that sows of their time, of their talents, of their monies, today in this offering will reap a big, big, I invoke a special blessing on their finances yes. Yes. and on their lives yes. and their protection. In Jesus' name, amen. Please bring your offerings up to the ushers. Thank you.
about three things the Lord has done for us. And let's give them three shouts. Can you think of something? Yes. Maybe one thing? Yeah. Yes. One thing you thought? Yes. All right, what about number two? You got number two? Got number two? Good. How about three? should be forever praising God. It's a holy duty. It's a holy habit. It's an awesome habit. It, it lifts us up, doesn't it? Let's just lift our hands one more time. He's Lord. Say it. I declare Jesus is Lord. Amen. Now let's just stomp on the devil. Maybe dance on his head because he's under our feet. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you guys. Awesome job. Don't you appreciate hearts of fire? Praise the Lord. I know uh, Drew had a concert last night. That was awesome. It benefited the veterans. Praise God. Always doing something, aren't they? Praise yes. the Lord. Praise no God. grass under their feet. Praise God. If you don't know, he has a heavy metal Christian rock band. <laughs> Say that three times. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God's good. All the time. All the time. God is good. God is good. Way to go. Praise God. Well, we had our first game last Monday. The Heat put on the Heat. We won 22 to 2. 22 to 2. Nice. And uh, Gail was pulled into the game, and she got a run too. Praise God. Pastor Gail. So we had a great time. Praise the Lord. And it's the best part to me is we're evangelizing a whole bunch of youth. Praise God! Oh my goodness. How many is on the team, brother? Twenty? Twenty? So we're, we're, aren't we brother Al? Al's been out there reaching out to all these young, young, young youngsters, I want to say. Young people. Amen? And uh, praise God. I'm just excited about what God's doing, aren't you? Yeah. God is doing a lot of things! <laughs> Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. Well, I want to talk to you. Pastor Steve had done a series for quite a while on prosperity. The choice is yours. Yeah. Okay. And uh, as we were receiving some of the best teaching I think I've ever heard him teach. Awesome. Just an incredible word. And uh, the Lord was speaking to me, though, and he's like, some aren't getting it. Not that the word wasn't awesome, but some of them aren't getting the revelation of the promise that he has for them. And it's because their receiver is broken. Their receiver is broken. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't like broken receivers. We have, uh, we live across the street from the beach, and our phone kept breaking. And so every time we would have internet and phone service, 15 to 16 days out of the month, it just wouldn't even work. So I finally just drop kicked it in the yard and said, I'm done with you. <laughs> but then you have teenagers that come over and want to stay at your house, and they all go, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi. <laughs> and so we just got the service again, and within, I would say, five hours, it was already dropped again. So something is wrong with the receiver. But uh, they're going to fix it today in Jesus' name. Amen? And so today, if something's wrong with your receiver, I get to fix it too. <laughs> Amen? Pastor Steve has a testimony. Come up and share that real quick. Hallelujah. Um, I just wanted to share a testimony about her teaching on receiving from God. Um, you know, she was teaching on more than just one area. Really, it's any area. And um, I have had pain in this side of my arm for over probably two to three years. I mean, so painful. I never tell anybody, but sometimes it was so painful that I couldn't sleep. I mean, I just keep speaking over it and, and all that stuff. And then this other arm also hurt, but it wasn't as bad as this one. Um, I had bumped it into a bunch of things, and I, I, uh, my dog one time, I was going this way, and the dog went that way. And I think it tore my, uh, what do they call that, rotator cuff? Rotator cuff. And so I couldn't.
Ah. But anyway, that's what it sounded like, crap. Oh, sorry. But, all right, I'll, I'll go on. And so I, after that message, it really, you know, hit my spirit. Yeah, I could be able to receive right now. I should receive right now. And I had Pastor Sherry pray for my arms. She just grabbed my arms. And she commanded healing to go into my arms. And within about five to ten minutes, all the pain that's been there for over two years in this arm was completely gone. And within about 15 minutes, all the pain was gone out of this arm. And I could never over in the last few years, you would hear a big crack. You hear it go, and now I can do whatever I want with it or whatever. I mean, it was instantly healed. So I just want to praise God and tell you this message is really important because it changed my life already. And I thank God for his goodness. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I appreciate that, hon. That's an awesome testimony. He said after he would play a service, which is kind of like try to jump rope, chew gum, and then uh, run around the platform or run around the building and then come up and preach. That's kind of the equivalent of a, doing a praise service for the guitarist and the pianist. He said his arms would hurt for like four days, just shooting pain. And he never had said that to me. And I'm like, oh, oh, oh no, 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 no. The devil's alive. And so we're talking about how to receive, and the title today is how to receive anything from God. Amen. Say it, how to receive anything from God, anything. So I know what have you prayed for that you didn't receive from God? We're going to find out because see, either God's word is true or we just need to go uh, walk on the beach and have a good time like the sinner does. Because I'm not here to push my agenda. I'm here to preach Jesus. Yes. And if his word isn't true, we need to find out now. Amen. Amen. I don't want to spend all my life, and I have, serving him, and he's never let me down. Amen. And if there's ever been a chance that there's been something wrong, it's never been on his part. It's always been on mine. Amen. Right. And so I want to talk about how to receive anything from God. And I want to quickly review, do a quick review. Last week we talked about that faith is now, right? Yeah. And we talked about how when it's now, it means now. It doesn't mean that you have to wait for a manifestation. All right? This is really important now. If someone gets saved today or, say, a group of people, they, they give their heart to God and we say, okay, now you need to wait for the manifestation of your salvation. Well, what if they die tomorrow? They'd go to hell. Now, everybody that knows the word knows that faith is now and that, that the manifestation, we don't wait for a manifestation for the new birth, right? Now, our spirit man is born again the moment we pray that sinner's prayer. Now, our body and mind, they need another whacking a couple times, like every day, right? You know, but it's the spirit of the man that gets saved. It's the new man, right? We are a new creation, right? We know that. We don't wait for the manifestation. Amen? Well, it's the same with healing. Healing was bought and purchased by Jesus on the cross. The same blood that purchased his, our salvation is the same blood that purchased now, say now, our healing. So waiting for a manifestation means we're not in faith. That's what we learned last week. Because if you're saying, well, I believe I've received it and the manifestation will come, then you're not in faith concerning your healing. Okay? And, and it's like he says, if you believe in your heart, right? Yes. Mark 11, 20, let's go to Mark 11, 22. It says, have faith in God, right? Yes. Verse 23, he, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his head? No, 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 in his heart. He will be, he shall not doubt in his heart. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Right? For with the heart man believes, that's Romans, under righteousness, right? For the heart man believes, not with the head. You don't believe God with your head. God's not a mind. He is a spirit. And so with the heart man believes. 
Right? Amen. If we're trying to get it in our head, you can forget it. It's not going to happen. The lights are on and nobody's home. <laughs> no, you can't receive from God with your head. You can't receive from God with your mind and your intellect. Well, I don't understand that. Well, that's why we're in faith class today, amen, because something's a little off on our receiver. And so we got to believe with our heart. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that they believe with their mind. It's always that they believed in their heart, amen, and then they received. Now, of course, the confession part is good, too. And so any time that we're asking God for a manifestation, then we're not in faith. Yes, because we, we looked at this last week, and I'm just going to quickly give you that quote. Our revelation is the manifestation. All right? You, you come into a situation and say, um, you know, we prayed for a guy named Buster, and he lived in Lakeland. He was one of my customers, and uh, he was an elderly gentleman, and he was going to have breakfast, actually, with one of my other customers. And I would say he was probably in his 70s, 75. And uh, as he was driving his car to meet Helen and Seely, they were driving to meet him, and he was driving to meet them. And all of a sudden, somebody ran a red light, and it hit him head on. And this is the gross part. What happened to him was horrific. I'm telling you, the damage that happened to him, what he had for breakfast went into his brain. Well, there was like 270 fractures, and when we went to pray for him, the Lord healed 140 of them within the day. Down there, and you, ooh, you're talking about one of our customers, you know, there's a different kind of uh, covering there. And she knew. She just says, you guys pray. She backed up and just, he was in intensive care. They said that he would have less than 50% chance of living. And if he ever did regain consciousness, he would never be right in the mind. And lo and behold, after prayer, you know, we didn't get to pray immediately, but we got to pray, you know, because we didn't hear about it right away, but we heard about it within, you know, about 18 hours. We went up there, and, you know, the Lord did a real fast, you know, manifestation, 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 right, on his body. Amen? Because faith receives with as, as real fact, right? That which is not revealed to the senses. So Seely stepped in for him. He was unconscious. And she says, I believe when you lay hands on him, he'll be healed. He's coming out of that bed. He is not going to be a vegetable, and he's not going to die because I love him and I want to marry him. We're like, well, we have a little extra agenda there. <laughs> and that was good. Praise God. And so you know what? Within about six months, you know, he received his healing. He came, not six months, but it took him six months to recover. But he received his healing right away. And he woke up the next day, and he was able to communicate. And he was able to, you know, receive. You know, God just came. Uh, later on, they called him the miracle man. And uh, all the rest of his life, he was referred to as the Miracle Man at Lakeland Regional Medical Center. And the Lord touched him in such a mighty way, he donated a, a large portion of money to a church to, you know, put up a structure for a cross. And uh, God moved, and he got saved, and the Lord did great things. But our revelation is the manifestation that we have, what we believe for. And so... It, when, when Buster was healed, you should have seen him when he saw us. It was like, you know, he couldn't wait to hug us and thank us for what we had done. And uh, he had received it. But you know what? I would go in there and, and visit them, and there were signs on the wall. Put your deodorant on. Eat breakfast. They had number 1 through 20, things that he needed to remember to do because his memory was coming back. And so, you know. of God's word. of God's word. Okay, so uh, Drew, come here for a
for a second, bro. Um, I can throw this at him, and if I hit him, he, he won't be mad at me. And so, <laughs> you can fall down. You can do this. <laughs> and so, what people think that um, how to receive, they think, you know, we don't get it with our head. Come on. Come on. We don't get it with our head. When God's word is ministered to the heart of the man, it's like this. It catches it. Thank you. You can have that. It just catches it. There, that's all it does. It, it's not how you think. It's not, you know, when, when God put the new birth in us, we hardly probably knew anything about God, right? right. All we knew was what we heard, correct? Yeah. And as we heard the word, what happened? Faith was deposited in our spirit, right? And, and we grabbed a hold of it with our spirit man, not our mind, not our intellect. Now, that doesn't mean it doesn't filter in there. And, of course, we're, we have a mind. We think all the time. We have to get our mind in control to receive and turn our mind off. Have you ever turned your mind off so you could receive from God? Yes. Yeah, that's what praying in the spirit does. It gets your mind quiet. Amen? So then you can begin to build the stronger man on the inside so that his capacity to receive gets bigger than the mind trying to throw it off. Well, that isn't going to happen. Oh, they're not going to get saved. Oh, you're not going to be blessed. Oh, their needs aren't going to be met this time. You know, I've met your, God's met your needs all these other times, but this time it's different. No, no, no. When the spirit of the man is enlightened, enlightened and revelation dawns on your spirit, you can't beat it out of them. Oh. Amen? How do you get that no-so? It's because the Spirit gave you revelation. Amen? And so that's how we receive. We receive with our heart and not our mind. Amen? So in the mind of God, healing has already happened. Right? It happened the same time our salvation happened. Think about it. The whole world has been paid for. Amen. Even the people that aren't even born have been paid to be able to go. God paid the price through Jesus Christ, right? Amen. He ransomed him, right? He, it's done. Yes. It's a done deal. It's a fit. And the people that, little baby in there, I know the name, but little, don't ask the name. And little baby in there is already saved, yes. right? Yes. Talk about provision. Glory yes. to God. God. It yes. receives like God. It's been in the very presence of God. Yes. Amen? And so its rights and privileges are at the peak. Yes. But we are to be like little children and to believe. Yes. To be quick to believe. Yes. Right. right? And quick to re what? Receive. Yes. If God's going to Amen? But, you know, a lot of probably make more than we, than we do. We choose that though. We chose to take a, a decrease in pay. We chose to sow to our church. Yeah. So Amen. it's not oh poor oh us. It's we're blessed. Amen. And we're giving. Yes. We choose to sow that. Yes. Now it won't always be that way because you got to be led by the Spirit. Yes. Right. right? You have to be led. And so that's the thing that I want to talk about today is how do we receive? Okay? How do we receive? How do we receive? You cannot believe in revelation. Amen. Right? Yes. And so how does revelation come? Well, faith comes by hearing and hearing what? The word of God. So faith doesn't come by having heard. Right? Faith doesn't come by praying for faith. A lot of people think faith comes for praying for faith. No. Nowhere in the word does it say you pray and get faith. Faith comes one way. By hearing and hearing the word of God. Amen? Amen? And so that's what we're going to look at today because some of the things that we have not had answered prayer. See, I don't like unanswered prayer. How about you? No. If something is, is not answered, I want to know why. Yes. You know, some people are like, oh, well, hey, Sarah. No, 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 no. Don't receive that. Don't settle for that. 
Yeah. If you're believing for something and it hasn't manifested, then there might be a problem. Maybe you're in the wrong tense. Maybe you're not in faith. Maybe I'm not in faith. Right? Yeah. But when God has put something in our heart to believe for, we should stand until we get what we're standing for. Yeah. And prosperity is the choice. It's our choice to receive what everything that God has for us. Yeah. Amen? Amen? I don't know about you, but my dreams are big. Yeah. I have really big dreams. I mean, just watching the, the I was telling Laura the other day, just watching the movie Sully. You ever seen that movie? It's awesome. You know, oh, it's so good. I recommend everybody watch it. But I'm like, I just want to invent a filter, you know, to cover so that that doesn't ever happen again. There's so many things I want to do. I want to be an inventor. And I am going to do it. Amen. <laughs> Maybe not that, but I've invented some things and now they're already out there. I didn't get to patent them in time. But that's okay because I got the creative one on the inside of me. Amen. Amen. So all things are possible to him who? Please. All things are what? Possible. Possible to what? Him who, him who believes where? In your, heart. in your heart. That's right. And so I love this. All things are possible to him who believe. But not all things are possible to those who believe for, oh, well, God can bless me with some things. You see, when some people read that, they go, yep, all things are possible for some of the things that I'm believing for. And then some people read it, oh, yes, all things are possible for one of the things that I'm believing for. We need to be greedy with the things of God. All things are possible for everything I'm believing for. Amen? And I tell you, sometimes a lack of money is a good motivator. Come on. Amen? Because when we first got married, we didn't hardly have any money. And uh, I know when we were first married, you know, Pastor Steve didn't have a keyboard at home. And so he would drive down to the church and play the, key, you know, play the piano at the church. And that was great, you know. But I got tired of him doing that. And uh, I'm like, Lord... You know, it's just you and me in the kitchen, and I'm praying, and I'm believing. And I said, I'm tired of him going down to the church and playing the piano. We should have our own in our own home. Amen. Right? Yeah. And I said, and I don't want to spend the money. Hello? Did you hear that? This is a good faith key right here. So many people are spending money that they could just have faith for and get it for free. Amen. Amen. I like what Pastor Randy Eplin says. It never costs you to believe God. Amen. I love that. It never costs you to believe God. And so I said, you know what? We don't have the money right now. We'll have it when we need it. But I don't want to spend it on a piano. Lord, you bring one in. I'm asking you to bring one in. Well, do you have anybody to agree with you? No, I didn't have anybody. I had God. <laughs> you ever been there? Sometimes you can't even tell anybody what you're believing for. But God hears your prayer and he'll hook up with you because all things are possible to those who believe. Well, if I'm agreeing with someone, no, I didn't say that. It says all things are possible to those who believe. And so I said, Lord, I just thank you. I have a piano. I have a piano. I'm pregnant with a piano and it's going to be at my house. And my husband is not going to have to go down to the church and play anymore. He can play as much as he wants right in our own home. And within, I, it took a little bit because sometimes it takes a little longer when you're new in a new realm in the spirit of faith. Yes. Right? Yes. If you're staying the same, you're backing up. Come on. Because faith is always active. Faith is always moving. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. Come on. Let's get a little bit louder. Yeah. Yes. This faith stuff's fun. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen. Amen. And so, you know, I, I just like, thank you, God. I didn't even tell Pastor Steve. And then one day, his sister, Lori, called and she said, hey, you know, we got mom and dad's piano and I want to ship it down to you. I'm like, yes, yes. And I'm in, in dancing in the kitchen. He goes, what do you do? And I go, I call that piano in. <laughs> That's my piano. <laughs> and so then... Uh, she, you know, she pack, they were going to pack it up, and then I got, we got a phone call and says, well, we can't ship it. It's so old. It's, you know, in great shape, but if we ship it that far from New York to Florida, it's going to be broken up, they said. Yeah. Yeah. And so I said, well, I don't receive, I don't receive that. I've still got my piano. <laughs> <laughs> right? you got to do that sometime. Yeah. Right? And she said, but I tell you what I want to do, because I promised you that piano. I'm just going to send you a check. what she 
we went down and got him a keyboard hallelujah and he still has it today praise god loves that thing amen and so faith believes before it sees we have the manifestation the manifestation is coming but our revelation is the manifestation until the thing that we believe for has come amen Amen. Praise God. And so, uh, praise the Lord. Now let's go over here and let's look at, um, let's just go ahead and look at a couple verses. I've given you my review. The Bible says, confident something we want is going to happen. It is certainly that what we hope for is waiting for us, even though we cannot see it up ahead. That's good, isn't it? Like that. And then now the Amplified, Hebrews 11 and 1, it says, Now faith is the assurance. It's the title deed. Say title deed. It's the confirmation of things hoped for. I like this. Divinely guaranteed. See, when that um, manifestation might not be there, but the revelation is, it's a divinely imparted revelation in your spirit. And it's guaranteed by the divine one. Amen? And he's not a man that he should lie. Right? And, and I've seen it. I've seen people that they get so close to getting it, but then they get discouraged and they drop down and, and, and back off. And it was just around the corner. Just around, have you felt that way? Just around the corner. And so we got to keep our faith high. Amen? And so it says, and it's the evidence of things not seen. It's the conviction of the reality. See, we're convicted that we know that it's here. Yes. We have it now. Yes. Right? Yes. Well, you know, I got prayed for. And I got it. I be to God, I got it. Yes. Amen? Yes. And you walk on down, and you may get it while you're pulling weeds. Right, Sister Jan? And all of a sudden, that ear opens up. Yes. But because she chose to say, I believe that I received what the word of the Lord was. A deaf ear is opening up. Yeah. And I said to her, now, Sister Jan, I believe that you'll receive it by the day because it's done. It's a done deal. And so she changed clothes, had a little lunch, went outside and started pulling weeds. And she, oh, something going on. She blew her nose. She thought it was a little blood and her ear popped right open. Yeah. See, God knows. He's waiting. He's waiting to see, are we going to grab a hold of this? That's Amen. Right. He's not going to do everything for us. Right. Hasn't he already done everything he's already going to do? Yes. Does he need to do any more? No. Come on, how would you like it if you love someone and they never retaliate with the love back? Yeah. See, faith is God's, God's way of receiving love yeah. from us. Amen. Right? Yeah. You know, if Jennifer says, hey, Pastor Sherry, you know, let's go do lunch and I'm going to meet you at Olive Garden. Sounds good, doesn't it? <laughs> And I get there and she's not there, I'd be a little disappointed. Right? Amen. Well, God always meets us. Yes. And, and, and say she's a little late and I drive away and I get all mad at her. Well, you weren't there. Yes, I was. I just was a, a minute late. I let someone to the Lord and had a prayer line in Walmart and they all fell out. <laughs> Blind eyes open and deaf ears walked. Yeah. Deaf ears walked. Yeah. Deaf ears walked. <laughs> Might as well make it good. Hallelujah. 
Some of you can get it, and some of you can let it go on by. I'm going to preach the word. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And believe me, you'll be tested on it later. I don't remember what she said. I wasn't paying attention. Well, don't get, don't get Pastor Sherry, man. I didn't spend a lot of time on this message for you not to listen. Yes. Amen? Amen? Pull in. Pull in. Amen. God's got miracles for you. Yes. You know, I've seen it too many doggone times. Somebody will go, yeah, I don't understand all that faith stuff. And they walk out the door and then their spouse dies. And then they hardly can make it. Because everything that they believe was rolled up into that spouse. And then for the rest of their life, they're like Eeyore in gloom and doom and sadness. And we reach out to them, don't we? And we reach out to them, and we reach out to them, and we spread the word of God, and they get a little bit of a blessing. But we got to stir ourselves up. Yes. Did you brush your teeth this morning, or did your mama do it? Come on. Now you're getting me mad, huh? Come on, we got to get our own self up. Amen? One day we will stand before the Lord. And we will give an account of what we were to do with our life. And I'll just go ahead and really get on a metal. He's heavy metal. I'm in a heavy metal right now. The safest place in the whole world is the perfect will of God. Amen. Just ministered to a girl. I, well, all my four children and I, we are now officially divorced. And I don't know why. I don't know why this happened to me. Now, I've known her since she was this big. And I'm like, hon, you need to find a good local church because that's number one. Find a good local church. And then you don't know, decide to visit that when you feel like it or when your work schedule permits it. You get your behind in. Yes. Behind church. Come on. I've said this to my daughter. I said, it, Lord forbid, but if anything ever happened to us, the safest place is God's church. Amen. That's it. And so some of us are missing out. Oh, we need money. We need prosperity. Well, are you faithful to your local church? Are you faithful to do what God has called you to do? You know, I know Pastor Steve preached on that, but I am the epitome of that. Pastor Gina can testify about that. She's known me since we were 15 years old. And I'm telling you, I don't even know where I would be without the, yeah, just yesterday, amen. I don't know where I would be without the local church. Amen. I don't have a clue where, I, I know where I'd be. I'd be dead. Yep. I would be dead, and I probably would be a lot of things that I would have never thought I could, would have been. Can we just thank God for the house of God? I thank God for the house of God. Aren't you got, glad you got brothers and sisters that know how to pray the prayer of faith for you? I mean, there's nothing like our family, but sometimes they just don't cut it because they are doing what they're called to do. Where are they? Why aren't they sitting beside us right now? But the Bible says you let the dead bury the dead. You put your hand in the plow and follow me and don't look back. Press on to that upper calling of God which is in Christ Jesus. We're called. We're appointed and we're anointed. And we got places to go and people to see and ministry to do. Amen? And if they want to play tiddly winks, then go for it. We're going to go on and do what they didn't do too. Amen? Praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm receiving today. Woo! Praise God. Amen. Well, God's dealt uh, Romans 12, 3. Let me keep on going. I'm trying not to preach to you, but you needed a little preaching this morning. Amen? Romans 12, 3. God's dealt to every man what? The. Say the. Measure. Of faith. Amen. And your measure can grow. It can grow. It can grow, it can grow, it can grow. Amen. Amen? Amen? George Mueller had an orphanage, and it was so many people that he had in his heart to feed and to clothe and to get the gospel into them. And he's like, I don't like what I see of these orphanages. 
you know, they come in and they feed them and uh, then they send them back out on the street. And he says, I want to change that. I want to house them all. I want to feed them and I want to put the word of God in them and I want to give them school too. Yeah. And he said that in his life and ministry and at that time, you know, they didn't have internet. They had super snail mail. <laughs> and, and they really hardly, at that time, didn't even really have uh, phones that much. Okay? And so for him to believe God, he didn't have newsletters. He had him and God. That was it. And he said, that he said it was as easy for him to believe for a million dollars as it was for one. It was the same thing. And that stirred your faith up on it. Amen. Because you know what? It is the same thing. Faith is the same in every area. It's the same. So it's just as easy. Oh, how can you say that? Because I know. It's by revelation. See, it's not something I got in my mind. It's by revelation. It's just as easy to believe for a million as it would be for a dollar. When you work out. Right? Pastor Dave, what's the highest you've ever lifted? Or Alan? What's the highest? What well, about 375? 375. Did you do it by eating uh, popsicles and pasta and steak? You worked at it though. He's pumped, right? That's what faith does. Faith, we've got it, but then we got to exercise it. But then when you're exercising it, oh, well, I can only believe for kindergarten. No, 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 you're already in high school. It's easy. Faith is easy. It's the easiest thing in the world to believe God. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Are you getting something? It starts out with this. We all start out with the same level of faith, and then we grow. Amen? And, we, and then all of a sudden, circumstances come in our life, and it hits us. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Do you think God's just going to make it easy? Oh. How would we ever have character if he made everything easy? Yeah. Right? I mean, come on. We want our children to have the integrity and character that we were taught, right? Yeah. And how do we do that? By doing every little thing for them. Make their lunches when they're, you know, 29. <laughs> right? No, 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 no. No, we, we give them responsibility. And when we see them suffering and it's hard, we're like, good. Yeah, you're me, 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 mom. No, no, it means character is being built. Right? Come on, if everything was handed to them, then they would have an I quit attitude all the time. Because if it's not instantaneous, then I quit. But they have to learn how to believe. And we are instructed to train them. Right? And so, you know, sometimes you got to stand and you got to roll up your sleeves and faith has some elbow grease and you get to working on those areas of your heart that are clouded. Why aren't I hearing from God? Why isn't that prayer answered? Well, I'm going to find out. Amen. And I'm not going to wait 20 years to find out. Yes. I want to know now. Yes. Amen? Amen? I told the Sunday night service one time about Brother Hagin. He, he went over to uh, ministry and he was going to a minister at Christmas time and he needed a certain amount of money and uh, he needed a certain amount of money for Christmas and then what his paycheck was too and so he just went in and he said now honey be in agreement with me this is what we need and this is what we're gonna have and uh, you know he would never had that amount before but he knew that he knew by revelation that he had it right and so he did the long week-long meeting and, and he needed a certain amount of money and uh, all the money came in, but what was it, $5 or something? $20, that's right, $25, that's right, thank you, $25. And so uh, the, the um, pastor, <laughs> so then the pastor and him, they, he said, hey, did you get your offering? And they go, oh, no, that people left. And so the pastor said, wow, well, let's go in and count your offering together then. And so they broke it all out and counted it up. And uh, the money wasn't there. And Brother Hagin says, well, that's not right. Yeah. Now listen to who's talking here. He's talking to the pastor of the church. That's not right. we got to count again. The audaciousness of him. You know? And so he says, well, we need to count it again. Because that's not what I believe for. 
See, that's the kind of attitude we got to have. We need to look again because it's got to be there because I believe for it. And so they counted it again, and it still wasn't there. He says, well, that's not right. Count it again. And so they counted it again. Still wasn't there. What's he going to do? What's he going to do? He's going to still believe that he received. Well, that's not right. Let's count it again. Now, this is the third time. I'm sure the pastor's going, oh, my goodness. Get over it. It's just not there. But that's not a person who has faith. No. You know it's there. It doesn't matter how it has to get there. That's not my responsibility. See, this is where people are off. They think, well, the manifestation isn't there. Then uh, I guess I just need. I just. I guess I just didn't get it. No, 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 no. Our part is to believe. Yes. His part is to do. Yes. All right. Don't mess up with the to doing because he's got it perfect. God's perfect. Yes. Right. So if there's anything that's messed up, it's on our part. Yes. Right. He says, count it again. It's got to be there because God's not a liar. And so now they're counting at number four. He says, well, let's switch. You count your money, and I'll count that money, and let's see. And it still wasn't there. And the pastor's looking at him like, oh, please. And uh, he says, oh, wait a minute. I forgot. I, I sold some books on the back table, and uh, the lady paid for the Bible that I brought for her especially, and, and she put this thing in my hand, and I just slipped it in my pocket. Let me see what's in there. And it was exactly what he needed. It was the payment for the Bible, but then the $20 that was missing that he was looking for. That was the offering. And so he had it all along. Yes. Had it all along. But you know what? I believe the Lord was very honored by that. Yes. That his tenaciousness would not stop. He was persistent. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. So for me, there was no other option but to stay in faith. How about you? Amen. There is no other option. Amen? Amen? Faith is an active word. It never sits on the job. Faith is always moving, always progressing, is it not? Amen. Let's go over to 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 5. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians chapter 5. You getting something? Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And I'm going to look out of the message, but you look at it out of yours. I'm going to read um, 6 through 8. That's why we live with such good cheer. You won't see us drooping our heads or dragging our feet. Cramped conditions here don't get us down. The, they only remind us of living conditions ahead. It's what we trust in but don't yet see that keeps us going. It's what we trust in and don't yet see that keeps us going. Do you suppose a few, listen, I love this. Do you suppose a few ruts in the road or are going to stop us? When the time comes, we'll be plenty ready to exchange exile for homecoming. Amen. Amen? And so there's not going to be a few, there might be a few ruts in the road, but they're not going to stop us. They may be boulders, but we could blow them out of the way with our faith. Amen? It really doesn't matter because who does the receiving? We do. Who does the giving? God. Who needs to change? We do. Does God ever need to make a change? We do. He's always perfect, yes. right? And so if we begin to say, well, I don't have it, where's the manifestation? You know what we're doing? We're questioning the God side instead of the man side. Did you hear me now? That's really important. If we're questioning the manifestation, then we're questioning God's side. Oh, how dare us think that we're perfect. Golly, maybe I have something wrong. Maybe I need to humble me, myself. myself. <laughs> maybe I need to walk in love. Maybe I need to forgive. Maybe I wasn't prompt to give. Yeah. Maybe God told me to give to somebody and I didn't do it and I'm waiting for a blessing and it's not coming to me. Yeah. Maybe I haven't asked God about an offering in 10 years. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, it's now real quiet. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So when you hear that you have faith to believe for something, faith receives as real fact that which is not revealed to the senses, right? That's the first place you look. Do I have God's word on it, right? Yes. So faith is when? No. Now. And when is it ever going to be tomorrow? Never. Never, right? And so we don't say, well, I'll see. I'll, I'll believe I have that sometime. That's not faith. That's saying, God, you're not doing your part. 
when we need to say, oh God, what part am I not doing? Right? Come on. And so we receive when hands are laid on us. That's how I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know, I didn't know about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The baptism is a free gift. Right? That's a now gift. See, there are tenses in God's word. He says he's given us love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and what? Self-control. Well, when are we going to believe we've got them? We already have them. Right? We already have them. Now, in money matters, we have to deal with a little bit of harvesting and a little bit of sowing. So that takes some time. And we also have to deal with man. Man. We do. Malachi. It says, given it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together. And running over. Shall men give into your bosom. Okay, that's good. shall be measured back to you. Yes. Amen? We had a, a, a nurse in our church in Lakeland, and the Lord kept telling her, so, Pastor Stephen Sherry, $150. Well, she says, I'll get around to it, Lord. I'll get around to it. And she said, things started breaking down. And she said, all of a sudden, you know, we're praising the Lord and doing the ministry, and she runs up to me. She goes, take it, take it, take it. I go, what? <laughs> what did I do? She goes, take this check now before God tells me to double it again. <laughs> and I opened it, and it was $300. I go, ooh, praise God. Thank you, Lord. And so she got the concept of give, and it'll be given unto you. And the same measure you give, it'll be measured back to you. And so sometimes the delay is on me obeying what God has told us to do. Come on. Right? It's never on God's part. No. It's always on man's side. Yes. Amen? Amen. Now let's go to 2 Corinthians 4. You're just over there in 5. Let's go over there in 4. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians 4, verse 18. I'm going to le- read it out of the New King James Version. It says, While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. Hmm. Sounds like faith to me. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Amen. 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 Praise God. So we're receiving eternal things. Amen? Amen. And uh, I like that. So we get what we want because we have faith and we stir it up. Right? Yeah. Maybe our marriage isn't so hot right now. Well, let's change it. We're having what we say. We're having what we think. Yeah. Well, you don't understand. They do this. Well, how about you do what they, what you want them to do for you? Yes. Come on, married people. Shout me down and say amen. Amen? amen. amen? So maybe the marriage is, maybe our children are doing things that we don't want them to do. We believe that we call them righteous. Amen? Amen? Amen. And we treat them as such. And we declare that. And then we don't turn around and go, you know what? You are going to be in so much trouble. And if you don't stop this, you're going to be in jail. That's calling against the words that you're speaking. Watch the things that we say out of our mouth. Amen? Amen? And so our mouth has to have a maintenance issue as well, right? Maybe we need a job. Maybe there's no money in our bank account. Maybe our finances aren't being met. You know, God knows that we have those things that we need. Yes. Right? Yes. Let's go over to um, Matthew chapter 6 for just a second. Because we're talking about how to receive anything. Right? Yes. Say anything. Anything. From God. From God. Go to Matthew 7. We're going to go look at verse 7. Or chapter 7. And then we're going to go to 6. But let's look at chapter 7. Matthew 7. Okay? You think God knows that when we're having a financial need, you think he knows? Oh, yeah. You think he cares? Yes. He does care. Yes. Right? Romans 8 tells you that. He who didn't spare his only son, how he will not freely give you all things. Right? Well, that's a revelation right there. But over here in Matthew chapter 7, let's go over here and look in verse 7. Right? Ask. Are you there in 7, 7? Yes. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Nice. Didn't have any time frame in there, did it? Nope. Just says, ask and it shall be given. Right? Yes. But then we put our own time frame in there. Right? Usually, that's good, Rosie. Yes. Well, we don't want to usually do that. Amen? Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and it shall be what? Opened unto you. 
Uh, instantaneous. Do you see that? Every time. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you're going to find it. Knock and it's already open to you. What happens when someone knocks on your door? You open it, right? Instantaneous. You don't wait 24 hours and go, are you there? <laughs> no. That's the way God is. When you ask, he's giving it to you. When you seek, you're finding. And when you're knocking, he's opening up the door. Amen? Amen? That's good. Amen. Amen. And so then he says, for everyone who asks receives. Everyone. Everyone. Say everyone. Everyone. I'm an everyone. Right? Maybe you need your bills paid. Maybe there's some things going on right now. Grab a hold of this. It's for everyone. And he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, it shall be opened. Right? So, what do you think the first point of this verse, of, of my point on how to receive would be? Yes. I am tricking you. Wake you up. Amen? You guys are really pulling and you're doing great. You're doing a good job. Amen? But I want you to think about it. What would be the first point? What would be the first point? And how do you really receive anything from God? Mm. Those are all good. Let's see what the Bible says. Let's look over here in Matthew 6. Are you there? Yes. And he says, verse 5, And when you pray, don't be like hypocrites who stand and pray in the synagogues and they pray long prayers, right? They're being seen by men, right? They're doing it to be seen by men. He says, but pray in your inner room, right? Yes. Shut the door. Pray to your heavenly Father who sees in secret. We had somebody uh, the other day knocking on the door. This happens all the time. All the time. And, uh, you know, you just fight the tears sometimes because they're knocking on the door and they're like, they're starving. And uh, we, we lead so many people to the Lord every week. Every week. On the phone. Just because we're here in this building and they walk up. They're hungry, they're thirsty, they need food, they need clothing, they're asking, they're knocking on the window. And we open up, I'm starving, do you have anything to eat? I tell you, it really touches your heart when you're feeding a mother with their children. Yes. Or a pregnant, a pregnant mom and her family. I mean, it's amazing to see how hungry the world is. They're hurting out there. Yes. And we have got the words of eternal life. And we've got Amen. something that will save them. Amen? Amen. And we get to lead a lot of them to the Lord. Bless you. And so he says over here, he says in verse, where was I? Verse 6. six he says, you pray in secret. Verse 7, praying, don't use repetition. Don't keep praying and praying. and pray. God, I need it. I need it. I need it. That's just a broken record. He says, it's not faith. His children are beggars. Amen? Amen? We believe that our Father has heard us. Bless you. And we curse those sneezes right now. He's whole. Amen? Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. And so we believe our Father's heard us. Yes. The first time that we prayed. Amen. Yes. Amen? Now sometimes on the finances, the devil is hindering those finances. That's why we got to bind them up. Yes. Bind the strong man. And then you command the angels to go and loosen the monies. Yes. And sometimes I see them kicking people in the butt to loose the monies to the people of God. That boss holding back that, you know, increase of salary or that promotion. And we're just like, Lord, you move them in now. You move them in. God's people are the blessed. Yes. You got to bind them up, though, sometimes. The devil wants to steal our money. That's what he came to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so then he goes on and he says, verse 9. Pray, then he says, show us how to pray. Jesus is teaching them how to pray. He says, pray then in this way. What? This way, this way. Say this way. This way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And what is it? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that's my first point. We need to pray that we understand the will of the Lord. Amen? Because that's the thing that I've seen more than anything when people having trouble to receive is they don't understand that it's God's will for them to receive. Amen. And they don't understand how to believe. Well, I'm believing for seven million oil wells. Well, maybe if you're the Donald, you could believe for that. But if you haven't believed for a headache, you're certainly not going to get seven million oil wells. Right? Because I can see Gilligan and Alan Bradjevich lifting weights. Gilligan on Gilligan's Island, you know, the skinny guy. Right? Guess who's going to win? 
He's going to win every time because he's been diligent to lift the weights, right? Yes. And so how are we?